So this is a big question that uh, you know everybody says this, right? Everybody says like, oh, the goalie's the quarterback of the team, you know, they're the they're the second coach in the field, yeah. And you know, or just the other day I was talking to a you know to a a, a dad of a goalie where you know young goalie and the and the coach is like, hey, I really want you to take more of a leadership position this year and really step up and and talk more and direct people. Well. You know the, the 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 dynamic of like a young goalie around like older kids is challenging, right? Like you've got all these social hierarchies, man. Like you know that your that your goalie is now supposed to deal with, and for a coach to just say, "Hey, you know, yeah, you're the, um, you know, you're the you're you're a second coach in the field. We need you to be a quarterback back there, telling guys where to go, when to slide, do all this stuff." Like, hey, that's well and good, right? And you know, in Lacrosse Goal University, I have a massive module on goalie communication. But the dynamics of when it actually happens on the team, it's a different deal. And so I want to talk about that today uh, by, by saying, like, one, the coach has to facilitate that dynamic, okay? So it's one thing to tell that goalie, like, hey, man, good job, like, you know, or hey, you know, you're doing great back there. I really want, you know, I want you to take more of a leadership position this year, you know, tell the girls where to go and, and, and. Girls are, I'll be honest, girls are worse than boys when it comes to these things. Girls are, they, they play psychological warfare on each other, right? It's it's way worse than the boys are. Look, the boys will go out and they will be rough and tumble and they will check and they will hit and they will sometimes fight. But the, the, the dynamic on the boys side is like, it's a little bit more defined. You know, it, it, there's a little bit more of a, of a, a physical hierarchy. And if you, and if you can play well, um, you know, you might not be, you may not be like ready to, to, to physically yet, but, but within the tribe, it's like the path is, def is easily defined on the girl's side. I've seen some crazy ass, pardon me, some crazy ass shit go down some psychological warfare. And it just drives me crazy. So if coaches don't understand that, uh, then this whole thing goes, this whole thing falls apart. Okay. So, so a coach needs to help the team understand what the goalie is calling, why they're calling it, why it matters, what, you know, what to listen to and how to play. Because, because if I'm a defender and I'm listening to my goalie and my goalie's calling ball position and I know what the slide what package we're running defensively, then the way I pay attention to the player I'm covering off ball. Okay. That's really what makes the biggest difference. It's not about on ball. It's off ball, right? If I understand all that as a defender, I can play very, very differently. And I, I will tell you this hands down. This is probably one of the most poorly coached things in the sport, right? And so can your goalie be a coach on the field? Hell yeah. And a lot of the goalies that I work with, it's funny, like, you know, my lacrosse goal university goalies, it's kind of like, we're a little bit of a team, you know, outside of the team. It's like, we're, you know, we're working like I'm an unbiased observer, right? My job is to help the goalie get, be as successful as possible within the confines of what they have, right? What the, the talent, the coaches have, the talent, the team has. Um, and so, yeah, so it's, so it's, it's like a lot of times I'm, I'm kind of, um, not babysitting. That's not the word, but I'm, I'm strategizing with the goalie. I'm like, saying, all right, listen, here's the deal. You know, we're going to work on communication, but you know, you know, Kendall there you, you doesn't know what the hell's going on. So, so you're going to make this call because someday you're going to be with a defender who knows what's going on. But right now you got to be prepared that, that that's probably not going to happen. Right. But, or the coach doesn't know how to teach goalie communication in the defensive half. And, the go the coaches knows oh the goalie should be talking or maybe they have a goalie coach and the goalie coach is like all right listen you got to call this this and this but there's no continuity between the coach saying that and the team actually fulfilling what's happening because then the goalie's going like well wait you know like a, a well trained goalie in this should be able to operate their defense like pawns on a chessboard right like puppets on like a marionette right you guys know what a marionette is right it's like puppet on a string you know. Um, I have a wicked marionette back in Boston in my mom's attic and it's of, it's of animal from the Muppets. It's the best mare. I got to get that because that would be the best. I got to add that to my collection behind here next to Otis, my moose. But, but the idea is that your goalie should be, you know, once they get up to speed and at first, like a young kid, 
if your goalie is like 10, 11, 12 years old, this is going to be weird, you know, boys and girls. The thing, the, 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 the fundamental thing that breaks this down is that, okay, we teach a goalie like how to be that coach and how to tell where people are to go. And once the goalie understands like, okay, yeah, I, I need to yell slide. Oh, but wait, like, you know, Quinn didn't slide and now what's going on? What are we going to do? Um, and then we still get scored on. And But I need that goalie to keep making that call regardless of of who's out there in front of them, okay? So so this is really important. So your goalie can totally be that coach. But here's what happens. What I've noticed it, it kind of over the years doing this is that young goalies will hear, like first they start with ball position. And, and a good coach will help them start to, to do like the slide call, right? But there's some decision making to be made before that slide call is made, for example. Well, your goalie is still learning, may, may still be learning the game, and now trying to communicate is keeping them from making saves. So this is like you're you're always balancing that. And if your coach, like I, you know, you've heard me say this before, coaches are um, th like the game of field lacrosse is very complicated to coach. Right, like a football team would have like five coaches on the sideline coaching a mediocre middle school. And what do we have in, in lacrosse? Like we're, we're lucky if we have two guys on the sideline at a high school game sometimes. Okay. So, so this is something where, you know, the, a lot of my lacrosse goal university like goalies, we work on this a ton. And then what they end up doing is they get to their team and their coach is like, where the hell did you learn that? And they're like, no worry, coach. I got it. And then now co coach can go, okay, listen, now, now my goal is all set making calls. I got to tell the D like what to do and when, right? Um, because the other side of this, right? It, it, a lot of you guys know, it, we, you know, we talk about this. You'll, you'll see college teams, a goal goes in and the goalie will fish it out. And I always tell the goalie, don't fish it out. Give it to somebody else to fish out. And the goalie and the D will get together. My, my question is always like, what's going on in that conversation? And a lot of times, because because at the younger ages, parents say like, "Hey, you should get together with their D." Like after you know, goal goes in. What the hell are they going to say? Right? It, it, you're you're probably going to have like two kids on that defense that really knows what the hell just happened, right? And and of that, what ends up happening is like if I'm the goalie and I don't know how to say, "Hey, Jimmy, if you could have like you know, dry like what's Jimmy going to say? Shut up, you little." Like, you know, it's, it's, this is a lot of social stuff going on here, guys. Right. So, so the coach has to be able to facilitate these things and go like, okay, listen, it's okay to say that I messed up on the girl's side in particular. What I see happen a lot is def it really comes down to the physical inability to play really solid defense, right? It is very difficult to basically follow someone running at you and running right and left and to stay in front of that offensive player. You barely see it happen correctly at the, at the collegiate level. Okay. Where you see a defender who can shut down an offensive player. Cause what do you end up seeing? You end up seeing defense like overcommit and, and it's just, it's just crazy. But if you look at basketball, um, you see, better defense but the ball carrier can't typically doesn't move as quickly as a lacrosse player can with the stick in their hand like it or the ball in their stick right when you're doing a dribble and you're crossing over that that kind of th slows down the offensive player but what you're watching what you should be watching is the, how that defensive player moves but in the girls game in lacrosse you know a goalie can be able to call positions call slide but then do you have the physical ability as a team to do what the goalie's asking you to do so that gets really frustrating for a goalie because they 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 learn what they're supposed to call, they know what they're supposed to call, and then by the time they call it, the team can't execute because physically they're behind. Okay, um, Alex, Alex, great question here. Uh, my 2026 got very frustrated by his defense that wouldn't listen to him. I was frustrated that the coaches and parents didn't back him up. Yeah. So Alex, like I was saying, um. You're like, that's a common issue. Okay. It's, it's a common issue. What ends up happening is that it, you've got to help your goalie 
with the resources to just keep doing what they know is right. Like, so what do I mean by that? So let's say, let's use an example of calling a slide. All right. So I want my goalies to minimally understand, all right, where's the ball, right? Um, of all the people on the field, the goalie knows where the ball is at all times. Okay. But that defender on the far side of the field might not because they're, their heads twisted around because they're watching their player. Right. But, but the next thing I want my goalie to really, really grasp is when should a slide come? Right. When is the on ball defender beaten that we now need a slide? Because what I see, so I was doing a goalie audit for a collegiate goalie just this past week. And, and what's crazy to me is that even at the collegiate level, I see defenders looking to slide who are not even the person that would be sliding in, you know, in, in, in this situation. So let's like, let's just use something easy. Like the offense is in, um, a two, three, one. So they got one person in, in the crease. Usually what we're going to do there is we're going to slide from the crease. Okay. We're going to slide from the crease so that whoever the crease defender is, is hot. Right. And so as a goalie, I'm saying, Quinn, you're hot. And then I'm looking to the backside defender, whoever that is. And I'm saying, Timmy, you're helping, right? And so if the defense understands this, then then the, if they listen to their goalie and the goalie says, ball's top left, I don't even have to look at the, where the ball is. I just got to watch my guy because how many times have you seen somebody get caught like, you know, um, where a guy just backdoors him? You know, defender who's not supposed to be sliding looks at the, where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Not listen to their goalie. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? And then their, their player like backdoors them and the pass comes and the defender's like, oh shit. Oh wait, didn't need to happen. Didn't need to happen. And so I see this at the collegiate level. You can watch, and, and even with like really fast moving offenses, a good defense it should like, should be on top of this. And I just, I just think coaches just don't care anymore. They don't, they don't, they don't value this enough. And so, so I want my, my goalie though, to be able to understand like, okay, you know, our defender on the ball right now is really good. So we're probably not going to need a slide. So let's say Chris, my, my crease defender is hot. I'm, you know, my goalie mountain may say like, okay, listen, Chris, hold, hold, hold. I'm just, I'm just telling Chris, like, hold, hold, hold. Now, if Chris goes and we get screwed because of it, well, now we can back up and go, hey, hey, man. And this is where, as a goalie, your goalie needs to learn. Th these are like people skills, man. And and it's and no coach. This isn't taught in school. This is coaches don't teach this shit. Pardon me, um, but I do. But your coach on the sideline is trying to get an offense in, hoping his team can catch and throw. Right there, they can't even get to this part. So it doesn't surprise me that your team, you know, doesn't, um, uh, doesn't, um, uh, you know, can't do that. But I don't want your goalie to stop, right? And this is why I totally, I, I encourage like video review. I encourage you, you know, just hey, listen, because I want your goalie. If a goal goes behind him, I want your goalie to go. All right, listen. Um, that didn't need to happen. I'm still going to like, you know, I, I say that if the team was so damn good, they wouldn't need a goalie. That's my favorite saying. But the truth is, is that even though that I believe that I also believe like we signed up to, to stop anything, so, but I would rather have, you know, a shot from outside than a shot from in close. I would ha rather have a four on three from outside 15 yards than a two on one inside five, right? Those sorts of things. Right. And so, but as a goalie, I want to, I want to be proud of the fact that, that, all right, I didn't call slide. Kevin slid, easy pass to his player on the crease, and it was a slam dunk. So had Kevin not slid because we didn't need the slide, like I want your goalie to be able to walk away with that. So that's where, like, when you know when the score is 16-5 and your goalie goes back and looks at their numbers and they go, like, wow, eight of those goals came within five yards, and um and they happen in these, you can grade those goals against, right? So, so that's, to me, that's elite athletic goaltending. Like that's elite thinking and it'll shock you. Like even collegiate goalies don't do that, but other sports do that. Other sports do that. Like you wouldn't believe 
um, Urban Meyer, like who some of you might know, um, uh, football coach. Uh, he's now in the professional ranks. What's kind of crazy was he he implemented a a drill in 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 the pro ranks that he used to run in college. Basically, every guy is tracked on compete level, so every single play is tracked. Now they have tons of resources. I get it, but as a family, right? As a parent, you know, as as a, as a you know, with, we've all got a high defin ca definition camera in your in your pocket. Everybody has one. Use it. And then go home and go like, all right, yeah, you let in like six goals in the second half. And three of those goals were because a slide went way too early. And now we know that, you know, we can communicate it better. Um, uh, Joel Rose writes, kids struggle to learn to trust each other. That goalie huddle after goal is key to building that trust. Hey, no blame here. What happened and how do we keep it from happening again? Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. But as parents on the sideline, we're not in that huddle. And so, um, so you just got to be aware of what's actually being communicated in the huddle. Uh, and so as a parent, if you're not a coach and, and, and your son comes home and goes like, Hey, listen, we did the huddle thing. And, uh, Kevin just called us all dicks and walked away. Well, okay. That's fine you know, but that's like, you're right. Like it's part about learning like team and things like that. But I, I would like to have a coach on those on that as well. Right. Just basically seeing like, Hey, listen, yeah, there's no blame here. We're all learning, but we say that as adults and we understand it, but kids, man, it's hard. Like it's so weird. You know, it's, it's, and it's, and, um, I'm not one of those parents that thinks like every generation is the word. Like it's, I'm not that at all. Um, I saw this great quote years ago. It was like, uh, it's, it said something that something effect like the kids of today, you know, the kids of today don't respect their elders. They are uh, distracted by the latest um, uh, new and shiny things. They, um, they uh, don't care about history. And the quote was labeled like from 1610, right? And so every generation does that. So I, I don't do that. But I, I'm just saying now that, you know, kids are, are and I, it's a lot of it is because of social media and, and, and uh, a lot of online bullying stuff. But uh, I want your goalie to rise above that. I think one of the best things, and, and Alex, this is for you too. Um, Joel, I know you understand this, but like when you have bigger fish to fry, like when your goalie has their eye on a bigger prize, then they tend to be this beacon and they tend to just kind of, if they can stay steady, that's probably the biggest thing your goalie can do is stay steady of mind, uh, then, and then not get too down on stuff. It's like, you know, and say my bad on some of those shots, not by, my bad on every shot. I had a goalie this summer. This goalie went to four consecutive tournaments and he had a defenseman. He, he was with a new travel team and the travel team was kind of, eh. um, the travel team thought they were better than they were. And I saw, obviously I saw, you know, I saw four of these games, with our goalie audits and this one defender basically no one was reining in this one defender and this one defender felt like he had to do everything was calling switches and you know and and and, and trying to cover the ball and sliding when he didn't need to slide or sliding when he wasn't the slide just and no coach was reeling that in and i'm like okay i, was, I had to tell tell my goalie like listen you're doing the right stuff you're doing but but see these issues the once these issues get fixed your game is going to instantly improve and if you if your goalie can come away from a loss with that knowledge that's um fantastic so your goalie can be the coach on the field there will be some learning okay um any of you guys read the book surrounded by idiots yet um i just it's just uh this i've been listening to the audiobook it's fantastic um, it is a, uh, it was written by a guy, um, in Sweden, um, Thomas Erickson. I'll try to put the graphic up right now. Um, but this is a good book. It's basically about personalities and it's basically about personalities by color. Uh, and so for a lot of you guys know, like, you know, about personality profiles and disc, you know, if you go on Tony Robbins' website, there's a disc profile, um, for free. Uh, for my athletes in mental performance school, I run my athletes through mental, uh, through a personality, um, uh, basically a personality, um, assessment. 
and it's super helpful to know um, uh, to know what's going on. So here's the for those of you guys looking on the screen, um, there's the screen, um, and uh, this is the book "Surrounded by Idiots." Uh, so it's a great audio book, highly recommend it. And I think it would be really beneficial as a goalie uh, to understand this because you're going to understand, uh, you'll start to understand personalities, and you'll start to understand like how to talk to your defense, right? Because um, you'll have kids that are are reds, right? Reds or type A or Ds, um, and you have yellow, and they need to be talked to a different way, and then you have blues and greens. So um, that's a huge uh, that's a huge um, uh, resource. I would check that out. Okay, I would totally check that out, um, and uh, I think it should be basically um, required reading. <laughs> so, so all right. All right, guys, thanks for watching and thanks for listening wherever you are. Do me a favor, hit the like button if you like this and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. When you're ready, head on over to lacrossegoalieuniversity.com forward slash coaching so I can work with you and your goalie. And while you're at it, check out athletespecific.com to learn more about mental performance and high performance. You may not know this, but I work with athletes in a variety of sports. Lacrosse is my love, but man, I love athletes and the families who support them. So head on over to athletespecific.com, check it out. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.